Hey everyone, welcome back to Onyx Pages. I hope you're doing well. I am here and I am excited because I am going to be unboxing a novella um, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Yes, I hope that you are too. Enjoy. Hi everyone, thanks for sticking around. I am really excited. I am I'm I am I wanna even I wanna tell you how this happened, okay? So on Monday, February 26th, in the year of our Lord, Audrey Lord, 2024, I got an email from an author, a writer, saying, Hi and Jerry, I hope you're doing well. I'm literally reading it, okay? Hi and Jerry, I hope you're doing well. My debut novella title was officially released on February 6th and I wanted to bring it to your attention in case it interests you. If it does interest you, I'd be happy to send a free physical copy or ebook. And then the writer described the book as a black vampire romance following a Ghanaian American woman and a Ghanaian vampire. And so I was just like, I'm ready for this. I am excited, right? So yes. So I got very, very excited and I basically wrote back and said, oh my God, yes, send this. I want to hear about it. So that, so let me tell you just a couple of things about approaching any booktuber but we're really talking about me right now. If you are a an emerging writer or an established writer or anything like that, there are a couple of things that I think are important that I think can be helpful to you when you are reaching out to tell uh, a content creator like myself about your book. First of all, do your research. Make sure that the person who you're reaching out to is interested in the kind of work that you are producing. Not everyone likes every kind of book. So especially if you know that the person has a niche channel like me, you know that I read black books by black authors with predominantly black characters. I am into Afri African futurism. I am into horror, the speculative. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty niche about that. I'm very unapologetic about that. Um, so obviously, if you're going to be reaching out to me about a book that you think I might be interested in, like keep it short and identify the elements of the book that you think I might be interested in. So in this case, this writer says black vampire romance and we have a Ghanaian American woman and a Ghanaian vampire. So immediately, immediately I'm thinking, okay, there are vampires, and I love a vampire. I don't know if you know this, but I love vampires. So yes, give me a vampire. Romance, I'm not really a romance reader, but if it is romance in the context of something speculative, I am all for it, okay? So that's super cool. And then we have a Ghanaian American woman and a Ghanaian vampire. I don't know the gender of the vampire. If it is queer, I will be very, very excited. Um, but the fact, in fact, I read it as like, I, I thought I read it as sapphic. Yes, yes. So the subject, okay, even before, <laughs> even before we even got to the subject matter, check out the subject line. Black sapphic, sapphic novella, loving Safwa. So for me, I was just like, it's sapphic and vampiric. <laughs> and I like those things together, apparently. So anyway, just, it was well done. And then also, um, this writer, who I will tell you more about in a moment, this writer um, shared with me that the publisher is Neon Hemlock. Now, I'm not sure if you've had the opportunity to see what Neon Hemlock has produced, um, or if you've, you know, had an opportunity to um, 
you know, like see some of the interviews with some of the, the writers. Um, so Dave Ring is sort of like the head. I don't know what the proper word is, but the head of Neon Hemlock is, is what I think it's, he is. Um, and he's, he's super, super great. Um, and I've read a number of Neon Hemlock titles like um, Unhexes. Where is it? Unfettered Hexes, like this one. And then also, um, oh, where is it? Am I going to embarrass myself? It's possible. It's possible that embarrassment is afoot. Um, yes, there it is. So, Jerry's, is this Neon Hemlock? Yes. So, and this is How to Stay Alive. So, those are at least two. And I think I have two more. Brent Lambert's um, title, I don't have a copy of it, but I will get a copy of it. Um, so, they're just uh, like a number of really cool titles and I absolutely adored, adored this one. And I loved many of the stories that I read in this one as well. Um, okay, so you know, you tell me Neon Hemlock and I know that they're very careful about the books that they curate. And so I'm, I was like, yes, I trust the brand. I trust Dave's um, Dave's uh, decision making. I trust the vision, um, and and I want I want more. So obviously my answer was yes. Okay, I am talking a lot. So here is the envelope. Let me. I haven't even seen the cover. I'm excited. This is great. I hope this is recording. So flourish. Um, okay. You know what? I, I'm going to even let you see the cover before I see the cover. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to look at it now. Have you had long enough to look at it? Ooh, it's... Okay. Oh, this is so sweet. This is so sweet. And guess what? It was blurbed by Jewel Gomez, um, whose Gilda Stories is right here. So it's actually super cool because the Gilda Stories is also a black, I don't know if Jewel would call this, with, if, if Jewel would call this um, sapphic, but definitely lesbian vampire situation. So I love that the OG Jewel Gomez has blurbed the like new person. I don't know, emerging, emerging writer. Yes. So this is a cool thing. Okay. So very, very lovely. And you know what? This actually also, I guess because I've just read the color purple, kind of just something about these two in a field holding each other. I wonder if there's a relationship between, who knows? Okay, so Loving Safwa. Now the author of this very, very sweet looking novella is Liza or Liza Wemem Wemakor. I should have checked for the pronunciation of your name, Liza or Liza. Okay, so let me read a little bit about the author. Liza, or Liza, Wemakor, is a writer and scholar of speculative fiction and Black American literature. She was raised in New York and Atlanta, Georgia, and currently resides in Southern California. Okay, so I am curious about the voice. So I'm, I'm very curious because I know that there's a I get, oh, there's a note to me. I know that there's a Ghanaian, um, uh, a Ghanaian vampire and then a Ghanaian American love interest. So there's something there about like the continent and the diaspora loving each other. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, okay, let me look at the note. Hi, Jerry. Hi. So glad you're interested in reading LS. I've been following your YouTube channel for a while now and I admire your work. Please excuse the typos in the first print run. That's very beautiful. 
and I'm looking at the name, the Lisa or Liza Wemacore. Thank you. I love handwritten notes. This is beautiful. Okay, so let me see if there is a. Okay, when school teacher Cynthia gets a tattoo at a block party in 1991 Flatbush. She doesn't realize she's embarking on a life-changing romance with an immortal Ghanaian vampire. That's straight up on the nose. Like, there's no mystery here. Join Cynthia and Safwa on an affair that defies genre, weaving together stories from 19th century West Africa, late 20th century New York, and near, fu near future rural Maryland. That's really cool. So there's there's definitely a nod to the Gilda stories with lots of like time travel elements here as well. Um, I know this isn't a video about the Gilda stories, but I do think that there's something to be said about um, great works in conversation with each other and, you know, the respectful um, iteration, right, of, of a timeless story. So that's really exciting. Okay. Um, so let's read about some praise. So Jewel Gomez writes, Liza or Lisa Wemacor is a magical storyteller who blends together the lifeblood flowing from West Africa and Brooklyn into a sensual potion. Learning to take and to give, whether it's blood or kindness, is a gift of her that her characters bestow on us all. Now that, um, a gift, um, this idea of taking and giving, that element of um, vampire lore was introduced by Joel Gomez. So in creating, and there's a, there is a, um, an interview with her on my channel. Um, and she talks about um, really kind of queering um, the vampire and recreating this sort of black les lesbian vampire as, as an exchange um, in a way. And she, she, she looks at con issues of consent and so on in her reimagining of the vampire. So that's that's kind of exciting that that Jewel recognizes that in this work and sort of brings it through in her blurb. Uh, Samit Bazu, who is the author of the Jinbot of Shantaport, says loving Safwa journeys across centuries and continents to infuse new life into vampire literature. Tender, harsh, sensual, cerebral, and delightful, a debut made for your veins. <laughs> I love that. And Shingai and Jerry Kagunda, author of, and this is how to stay alive, says a deliciously sexy black sapphic reimagining of a world we so desperately need. I could live in Safwa and Cynthia's little universe for a thousand years. So Jerry is, Shingai and Jerry is lovely and I love her words and I trust her interests and so this is really great. Let's talk about the cover design. Um, Dave Ring, which is super cool. I didn't know that, it, does that mean he did the illustration? No, so the illustration was Nkai Delauter and then cover design was Dave Ring. So yes, thank you very much for this. Um, so Liza, I, uh, congratulations on publishing your novella and I wish you all the best. I am very much looking forward to reading it. This comes in at what? 90, 67 pages. So this is, oh, and it's got, is that art inside? Oh, okay. Like there's, you know, some artistic situations happening. You know what I love? A lot of Neon Hemlock's books, at least the ones that I that I've read have like texture, like art in the pages, right? So, you know, beautiful little nods to creativity and even in Unfettered Hexes too, like, you know, you're seeing some graphic work, some black and white um, drawings, illustrations, you know, just, there's, there's just so much depth and thoughtfulness to um, to these these books so yes if you haven't explored Neon Hemlock if you go to their website um, you can see all of the books that are available and I think you can buy bundles and 
things like that. Just really amazing, independent, um, necessary work. All right, my friends, I hope that you enjoyed this unboxing. Wait, let me see if there's something else. I don't think, I think that was it. Yes, okay. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing as much as I have. Uh, if you are interested in loving Safwa, let me know. Let me know why you're interested in it and what you are perhaps looking forward to experiencing. And also, if you have read the Gilda stories, I would also love to hear about what you would want from a, you know, a story written in 2024 of love between a Ghanaian and a Ghanaian American. Okay, that is it. If you've watched this video all the way to the end, I thank you very much. Please make sure that you like the video. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. That means a lot to me and I appreciate it. And I apparently am posting more regularly, so please hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted whenever I post new content. If you've watched this all the way to the end, you know what to do. I would love icons that match the cover of the book. I'm talking reds, blush pinks, brown and green and black. Did I miss anything? Yeah. You can throw some white in there if you want. All right. Read with purpose, everyone, and I will see you in the comments. Bye.